All right, I'm here at the southwest corner of the Florida Flywheelers Tractor Show, one of three shows, November, January, and February. All makes and models and implements of tractors are here and much more, and I'm going to walk through all of it, up and down every row. What we're going to be doing is picking a tractor suitable for farming, a pulled tractor with a drawbar and PTO, or a pulled tractor with a drawbar, PTO, three-point lift, maybe even plug-in hydraulics. We're going to pick the implements that make sense for that, for either gardening or light farming, and our definition will be under 40 acres. A common question is how much horsepower do I need? And of course, the answer is one. Since most of America, and indeed the world, was laid out north, south, east, west, cleared and stumped with a single horse and plow, beds were made with hand hose or drawn bedders, and planting done with a stick, finger, or horse-drawn cedar. That was it. So you can understand how my grandfather cleared and planted 20 acres with a six-team of ox, at 17 and 1917, and I could easily plow, plant, and cultivate five acres of peppers with no more than a 10 horsepower, single row at a time, BF Avery Model V tractor when I was 17. So, horsepower isn't the key to farming, but rather farming vast acreages on a schedule. Consider this University of Georgia test. If I want to pull a six-foot disc harrow at five miles per hour and cover three acres per hour, I will need a 29-horsepower drawbar tractor. But if I reduce speed to 3.5 miles per hour, I need only 20 horsepower to do it. If I reduce speed further, I can use even less horsepower to pull, but I'll need more time to cover that three acres. Here's where your predecessor saved you time and money. You probably won't even need a plow. Bare bones, you'll simply need a disc harrow to get the ground ready. All right, this is a harrow, AKA disc. The best of the best were made by Pounds Motor Company in Winter Garden and you see how it's it's straight? That's just going to make cuts in the soil. You can see the cuts if you look real close. Now, what do we do with that? Well, a, a pull-type tractor that we covered, what you're going to do is with this bar, you can pull this out so that this is straight. This back gang comes back so you've got an X something like that and in that position it the front blades are going to cut the back are going to throw the dirt to the side and you're going to have a very clean field after you get through with that betters to make rows east west north south so that each plant gets the same sunlight per day, and a simple cedar. You may also want cultivators to clean weeds and grass from your plant rows. We do need to figure out how to attach these things so we know which tractor makes sense. Bearing in mind there's multiple ways to do all these things, I'm just leading you down the cost-effective path. You could use your tractor's PTO to rototill the soil. You could add sprayers, water tanks, and other equipment. But this will get you planted, and if it worked for me and a few buddies for 50 acres of watermelons, it'll certainly work for you on a garden or smaller acreage. Let's look at how things hook up in general. All right, this is a Massey Harris, and when they say it's a pull tractor, what do they mean by that? Well, they mean that all of your stuff you're just you're going to be pulling with this bar and again we can drop tools in here and swing this either any way we want 
left, right, whatever we need to do, or straight if we're going to tow something down the road. But it doesn't have much in the way of hydraulics or uh, anything else. It is just meant to pull. And the implement we're pulling will either mechanically or with its own hydraulics drop a plow or, you know, a uh, hair or whatever it is on its own. And we just simply pull it. So we have to match product with product that makes sense. Now why do we have three pedals on a tractor? That's your clutch and you have brakes for each wheel. If you need to hit them both, you're going to hit in the center. This fellow was kind enough to give us a demonstration of how the hydraulic lift arms work. And how the power takeoff works. It's used to run water pumps, sprayers, rototillers, on and on. And the tractor also has a belt drive capable of running standalone equipment yeah, like a sugar cane mill or even a sawmill. Thank you, sir. He had his tractor running and was kind enough to show us how the hydraulic lifter works and the power takeoff works. And this is a Farm all turn into international harvester model H 38 horse 38 Super H and you can see how quiet these are. We've also got a belt drive we can belt to another machine, run a cane crusher, or you know, there's a a lot of things you can do with a tractor that has a lot power pads and this is the mechanical linkage that I you know used on the old Avery you've got a pistol grip here and you push the button pull this back and you're gonna drop your arms and now you're plowing okay very 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 simple doesn't take any more than that to grow a, a lot of stuff. I mean, I grew five acres worth of peppers with nothing more than that. All right, and since he's got a lot of stuff attached, let's go through it. Um, this is our where we're going to drop something. But he's got a linkage down here into a cedar all right as we're going along our row we've got a mounded row we've thrown up a mound this is gonna put a furrow in the row and right here we're gonna drop seeds out and we did a couple guys and I 50 acres of watermelons with nothing more than a single cedar and it worked like it gangbusters I mean you know they really are slick all right we got a got your toolbar here and I'm, I'm adjusting stuff so you can see that it moves we got our pins in for our draw bar he's got a cap over his PTO this pin goes into an arm that comes back if we've, we've got something for stability on our toolbar system here. Okay. And we can run a seed or a spread or a, yeah, all kinds of stuff we can do. Now, that's the adjustment for this, the hydraulics. I forget how many gears, okay five gears reverse the case will have a high range and a low range so it'll go super slow or super fast uh, what else we got that you see this is off of propane our tractors were run on propane and they were uh, you could eat off of the engine at teardown because it is such a clean burning 
fuel. Why they don't just do that? Now there's your little arm to engage the uh, power takeoff. Let's move on over to the Workmaster. 661 Workmaster. All right, we, wheels are apart, so it's standard duty tractor. Hydraulics, pull bar, PTO, inner gearing, five forward, nineteen sixty. And these were extremely popular tractors and uh, it will do the job today the Grove special and this is just a diesel version of what we just saw and I'll go through it see if there's anything different that you spot toolbar PTO oh, this one's got plug-in hydraulics so now we can have hydraulics on the machine back there that we're operating as well here's the power pack and that arm over there, let me go around, not get run over here. Ball on the front, we tow. And there's your activation arm, and here's your activation arm for the plug-in hydraulics right there. It just turns them on and off. All right. So you've got it, my friend. You're ready to buy a tractor and go farming. High clearance. If we got stuff that's growing, you know what this is now. It's our belt pad. We can run a sawmill, a cane crusher, anything off of that. When I say high clearance, I mean that is really high clearance. Toolbar on the front so we can attach stuff there. Maybe a push plow or whatever. Whatever we want. All right, looky there. I see they've caught a John Deere in the air cleaner. Huh. Filtered that right out. In the back, this is so tall, we're probably not going to have much. You get a toolbar and uh, power takeoff. About all you need. Your three pedals, you know what's going on there. You're ready to go farming, my friend.